historic neighbourhood. The project celebrates the history of neighbourhoods around Glasgow and lots of the activity has been happening here in the Barras. Um, we're very glad to be supported by the National Lottery Players, it's, uh, National Lottery Hedgefish Fund and the project wouldn't be possible without the support of National Lottery Players. Um, today we are joined by Peter Mortimer, a local historian who's been working with us on the project. Uh, Gavin Mitchell, it's, um, great love for the Barras. Alison Thulis, MP. And uh, everyone's just going to um, say a few words about the Barras. And also, very excitingly, one of the phrases that um, was donated to the project was Get Your Lucky Knickers. Get Your Lucky Knickers was shouted by Josie Lucky Knickers, who had a stall down on Kent Street, I believe. And I'm uh, very excited that we are joined by Josie's family today. Um, so thank you so much for coming. Uh, I'm just going to hand over to Peter now and he's going to say a few words about the Barras. Hello everyone. I'm going to take us back over 100 years, early part of the 20th century. And a lady called Margaret Russell married a guy called James McIver. Now, Margaret Russell came from Ayrshire. And, and James McIver was born at 36 Gallagate, just along at Glasgow Cross there. They got married. They were both fruit hawkers. They had a wee shop down in Main Street in Brigton. And they worked very hard. James went to the fruit market in the morning, brought the stock back to the shop. They sold it from there till 6 o'clock at night. And then Maggie would make up bags of fruit and she would go up into town and she'd stand in the cinema and the theatre queues and sell it. Around about that time, the police were getting pretty tight on street traders who were serving from the pavements and selling, a bit like what Paddy's Market was doing not so many years ago. And Margaret and James decided we need to get somewhere where we can uh, hold a market. And they bought a piece of ground in 1921. And the piece of ground was at the corner of Kent Street and Munkur Street, where we're standing just now. So Maggie and James bought this and they started to use it as an open-air market. They made additional money by hiring out barras. And there was big money in the barras as well. So they were getting money from the barras, they were getting money from the stall holders with the pitch. So, in 1921 they've got this happening. 1926, there was a weekend where it rained constantly for six weekends in Glasgow. And that absolutely brought havoc to the traders. Nobody could trade. The place was uh, empty. Everybody was staying in the house. So Maggie and James decided what we'll do is we'll build an open shed and at least we'd get the people under the cover of the roof of the shed. They did this. Two years later, they then enclosed it. And that's the building here that we know as the main market hall in, in, in the, the Barras. Now, James died in 1930. It, it carried over malaria from the First World War and it eventually took its toll on him. And in 1930, Maggie was left a widow. She had to run the business and she had nine wains. She was quite a woman. In 1934, she decided that she would build a function hall for her market traders. And the reason she had to build the function hall for her market traders was this. A couple of times a year, Maggie used to take all the, the stall holders for a night out and they went to the St Mungo Halls over in Moffat Street, Ballater Street. But they had kind of too good a time because eventually the St Mungo Halls wouldn't accept her booking. And she said, well, I'll need to build my own place. So she says, I'll build a wee uh, function room come dance hall. And in 1934, she built the Barrow bar Land as we know it. By 1938, it had doubled in size and was all the way along to Gibson Street. Now... It served through the war years and in fact Haw Haw who was a, a, a propagandist for the Nazis, he was an English uh, uh, lord but he was a propagandist for the Nazis, he used to talk about, now I hope the girls in Glasgow give the, our German boys as good a time as you show the Americans and all this kind of stuff. Anyway, 1958 was a bad year for the McIver family because two things happened. In the April of that year Maggie McIver died and she's buried up in Ridley Cemetery. In August of that year, the ballroom went on fire and it was gutted, it was burnt to the ground. Sam McIver, who by that time was in charge of the company, he decided, I'm going to rebuild it. 
and he built it bigger and swankier than anybody could imagine and in 1960 it opened. So since that time, our generation has known Barrowland as a, a, a place where you could go to the dancing and importantly you could come to a Saturday and Sunday market. And here we are, a hundred years on, 101 years on from Mar Maggie McIver and James's dream. Here we are standing in, in, the, in the marketplace at the area which she bought and it's still thriving today. And it's great to see you all here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter Martin. Just Gavin Mitchell there. Yeah, Gavin can you hear me if it, like this? Yes. Can you? Yeah. I might just do this. Um, hiya. Uh, it's smashing to be here. Uh, it's a real honour and a privilege to be here that after a hundred years, and I've been coming here for, I, I was thinking about it this morning, I've been coming here for over 50 of them, so <laughs> so over half a life of the market I've been coming here. We used to go to, my granny and I used to go to Paddy's market on a Saturday and we came here on a Sunday. Uh, and I, uh, we were just, Peter and I were discussing some of the old stalls, the towel stall over here, and the guy did your curtains over there, used to measure it with his cane and all that. Uh, and your, your jeweler chap here. So we always, I get kind of fed clothed here, as you can probably tell. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and all sorts of things here. Over there, I got my first ever single as well. So it's a huge part of my history of the bar, is I just adore it. And I come all the time. Just a couple of weeks ago, I brought a few friends down just to take them about. I have to say, and don't get too hostile, but one of them was for Edinburgh. <laughs> and uh, the look in his face, I tell you, he was behind us, and I could just see him going, oh my God, oh my God, as he was. <laughs> but uh, I, and so I'll still come down. A good place always to come where we hang over and get some uh, mussels and some hot donuts and just a wee wander about. And some old friends as well who had stalls here, like Peter Lafferty, my mate Mickey, who's here today, the brilliant record stall up in the square yard. So I, it's, it's very, very close to my heart. It means a lot. Uh, and it's just a, an amazing uh, privilege and honour to be asked to attend today and be here. And uh, I, thanks for coming. And here's to another 100 years, hopefully. Let's look after the bar. Thank you, Gavin. I'll shout as well if that's alright. <laughs> <laughs> Set the tone now, that's all right. it. Who's going to shout louder, Alison? <laughs> I'll do my best, do my best. I am Alison Thulis, Member of Parliament uh, for Glasgow Central and I am so proud uh, to have the Barris Market in my constituency. Uh, I've represented it now for uh, 14 years which is, has flown in and gotten to know some of the traders and some of the constituents who work here and come here for their shopping. And there was a time during that where we thought the Barris Market wasn't going to survive that we thought things were looking on the down, things were in the decline, people didn't want to come to a market in the same way. But every city has its great markets and the Barras is Glasgow's great market. So it's brilliant to see the investment that's come in, things getting repainted, new traders, the next generation coming in to make it live, to make it breathe and to last another hundred years. But we need to respect and we need to remember that history. And engraving the history in stone is a pretty good way to do that, I think. So as you go around the market, this afternoon as you look around you'll see we, we phrases embedded in the stones round about the place and these are part of the history, part of the living history, people's voices, things that people would say in the barras and it's great to see that as well. So thank you all for coming here today but come here, I'm sure you do, every weekend, spend your money, enjoy the new traders and the old traders as they work along together and let's make sure the barras last for another hundred years and beyond because it's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you very much. into uh, the pavements. The three up among Kerr Street. There's one on the corner here, one in the corner here, under this, which is not a dead body. Uh, <laughs> one in the corner over there, and there's one um, down on Gallowgate. There's your hot chestnuts. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to invite you all to come and pull off the tarpaulin. This is possibly the best known barren phrase, I would say. One, three. One, two, three. Hey! Hurry, hurry, Mrs. And I think that the last thanks of the day must go to the traders and the people that live and work in the barras. Um, and as Peter said, as Gavin, Gavin said, long may it continue. Thank you all for coming.
To you, to the place. To me, to you. Quickly do it, then it's all right. Do this quickly. Steady, steady. Don't be saying that. Oh, we're going this way. Which way? This way. Oh, I want to tell you. He's a joke. Oh yeah. Thanks, thanks for the news. <laughs> um, so, if you want to tell us your connection to the Barras and why you think um, activities like these are important. I suppose I've just been connected to the Barras as long as I can remember, really. I, I honestly can't remember the first time I was here since I was a child. I, I came here every Sunday without fail, my granny. Uh, and I've come here ever since, you know, and it's just all life is here. Um, I remember it so well, and I marked different parts of my life with the Barras. You know, it's where I bought my first single, it's where I had so many life experiences. Some of them I can't tell you. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and the Barland, of course. I mean, it's just an amazing, vibrant place, and I just think it's important that we remember it. You know, a hundred years and I've been coming here for over half of that. Uh, so to have things like this here, it's amazing to mark it in stone and remember it and, and, and remember the people who worked here uh, and the, the, the traders and hawkers as I do, I remember some of these phrases. Um, and so for it to be passed down just very much as the, as the culture has been and should be, I think is, is vital and integral and hopefully continues, you know. Uh, I bring children here, gosh that sounds weird, but I bring, you know, I bring my own kids here and various people and I still show people around this first stop place in Glasgow really to come to. So it's, uh, it's just a huge honour and privilege to be here and to keep it alive and hopefully for another hundred years. Thank you. Is that alright? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>